it, I need it red. <clears throat> Hello and welcome back to Gotham Sounds coverage of NAB 2024. Uh, here with Wizzycom, and uh, as we're trying, to, we're trying to do taglines. Um, Gotham Sound purveyors of sound and stuff. Yeah. Uh, with sound and stuff like Wizzycom, good sound and stuff. We like to be sound and stuff. It's got a it's got a ring to it. Anyway, Jeff, uh, great to see you. <laughs> you as well. Yeah. Um, so it's it's the end of our day. We're you know you guys are cleaning up. Um, so tell us about what is going on with Wizzycom. You know we we have been uh, we've been just keeping our heads down, getting some things, working on some projects, a few things that we're we're getting close to talk about, like some improvements on software and and frequency coordination with the MCR fifty fours in the MRKs, you know, just some some things that we know we need to get done uh, to answer the question that someone's already typing. Not Mac, nothing for Mac yet. Uh -huh. Just gonna answer that one early for you, Jared, uh -huh. uh, for when someone asks. But we're you know we're working on just a couple small things along the way, and some some cool concepts that we're working on. Cool. All right. Awesome. Um, so so let's just let's talk about what you have. So there are there, there are some exciting new things like this. Yeah. This MTP sixty one was day viewed announced last year yeah right. um but started shipping i think late mid late last yeah. year there was there was some things we we found in our you know we we worked some of your users and some of our users collectively mutually is mm -hmm. we did some beta testing and in, in the field and, and found some some interesting bugs that we wanted to resolve before we shipped mm -hmm. you know we we've learned from some things we've done in the past that when when it hits you know when it hits the streets we want it to be we want it to be excellent yeah and so we've we've done a lot in improving the app and the connectivity and you know one of the things that we've started looking at and, and starting to gauge is, is about doing it with a built-in microdot for the mm -hmm. users of, of dpa mics um so you know for anyone maybe less familiar with WYSICOM, uh this is really our, our call it a flagship if you would of our receiver system mm -hmm. so we take an mcr 54 four channel true diversity multiband put it in the mrk so you get 16 channels true diversity multiband with multi-zone input and then you can cascade so you can get 64 channels in 4ru wow okay so it, it literally two antennas in boom 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 four four antennas in four two antennas zones. in two zones okay and then boom 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 yeah boom. and the other thing is there's there's fiber receivers built into this yeah so we we have an expansion card we call the ex2 mm -hmm. and what that gives you is when you use our bflt you can expand your coverage so when we look at say a cart example mm -hmm. and as you may have seen in a picture tk can share is we have a cart from blackbird thank mm -hmm. you and so you know maybe you have a, a situation where you want to have your receivers and your mixer at the cart and you need to cover a larger area than maybe you've been doing previously where you'd put a pair of antennas up and you gain coverage. But now let's say we're in New York. We want to walk down the street. You run a pair of attack fiber cable and just bring the antennas straight back in your receiver system. Nice. Uh, um, so, okay. So, I, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit scattered. But uh, so MRK 16, 16 channels, one rack unit, DC power, fiber, multiple zones. Very cool. And I mean, the other thing to note, just for people that aren't familiar with Wizzycom antennas, the antennas can be remote controlled. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you can fully control the antenna. So if you put them straight up on a mast, or you want to run them two, three hundred feet of of coaxial, mm -hmm. you can control all the filters and add makeup gain for that cable. Because usually coax is about three dB per hundred feet. Um, but in that case, where we tend to look at going to fiber, and you know, a lot of people, you start saying fiber, they say, oh no, no, not for me. But we we kind of built this BFLs product to make fiber more attainable and easier to use for more people. Mm. So the black box that TK said, uh, what's in the black box, Jeff? To preface this, I got in a little trouble last year for showing you all something I shouldn't have. Okay, great. So I'm going to be a little more careful this Let's year. Let's do it again. Um, I am allowed to show this. This is more of a proof of concept. Uh, you know, Peter, uh, as maybe many of you know, who is behind the camera, has, you know, talked about this and we've kind of thought about, you know, this is kind of what we suggest for users who are wanting to add fibers to their system. You take a pair of BFLs. All we've done is mounted them in a case, put a couple of L-series batteries, and on the bottom there's a PAW for doing IFB, and a little latch to keep it locked in and closed so you can bear it from the elements. Mm, that's cool. And uh, so this is uh, not an official WYSICOM product. 
not but, not a WYSI product, uh -huh. but I know Peter's been talking about some solutions for that. And people can glue their own DIYs. Right. It, and, it, exactly. There's there's mounting points on the bottom and the tops and bottoms of or the back top and bottom of the BFL that you'll see there's a top bottom and on the back there's screw inputs. So you can build a solution just like this. And you know, the team at, at Gotham can assist in, mm -hmm. in getting all the pieces for it of building a box that supports exactly this. Yeah. I However know. you want to do it. If it's diversity to receive only or you want to do diversity to receive and some IFBs, whatever you want to do, this whole system is so incredibly easily configurable. Now for that this has been on for a while, right? This yeah, been on okay. I think all all day. So I know that we have a, a customer, uh Marlo in Ohio that is is building something just like this um for use with with his cart and uh, one of the concerns was heat and just anecdotally this is uh, very cool it's it's barely yeah it's barely warm this would not keep me warm on a cold winter night now with that the one the one note i would suggest because when we're inside and if you've never been to las vegas uh you'll notice we're all wearing sweaters and jackets uh -huh. not for the aesthetic because it's chilly in here but if you were going to do this as an outdoor in, in thing, we would suggest not to do a black case. Mm. Black cases look good, but they attract and hold a lot of heat. I see. Okay. So that's why we'd go to something like a tan or a, a mm -hmm. lighter color that would reflect more heat away. And Because in previous shows, WYSIWYGOM has shown off a big fiber, fiber case. Box. With, yeah. That's, and that's a big desert tan pelican. Oh. So uh, to going off topic for a second, we've talked a lot about uh, colors. Yep. Uh, and favorite colors. Uh, wh what's your vote? Are you talking about favorite colors as in like pelican cases and no, things? No, no, as in like if you were going to have something that was your favorite color, what would it be? It's an excellent question. Um, you know, I. Hard hitting I'm, news here. At hard hitting news. TV. This is really uh -huh. what the people have tuned in yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I tend to, especially when it comes to like lighting in my spaces, I like a, a nice deep blue. Oh, uh -huh. like because I like I like my RGB lights. We got my a Phillips, blue. My All right. you. Great. You know, I, I love it. But for cases, it is black or nothing. Black or nothing. Okay, um, very good. So you're an indoor case kind of guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I, I, these are soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. So, um, you know, the the MTP sixty one has been very well received. It was very popular. The battery life is outstanding for a transmitter of that size. Um, and yeah, the output power is outstanding for a transmitter of that size. So it's, it's really been uh, a hit. Uh, we do have some questions. Sure. Uh, so James Clark wants to know if there are any upcoming firmware updates, uh, notably USB-C file transfer on the MTP60. So uh, we're always working on firmware updates, but in, in reference to the USB-C because what he's asking is, is can you take data off of an S micro SD on the MTP60 via USB-C? And, and as of now, we've been kind of looking at there's not a, there's not, not a mechanism to do that within the, the 60. Um, so you have to take the card out. It's not a firmware limitation. Got it. Uh, I, I hope to be corrected on that at some stage. But as, as of now, and Italy has said that it, it can't be done that way. Got it. Okay. Uh, more questions. Uh, we got two from Kyle. Uh, so Kyle uh, says, hello, Jeff. Oh, I was going to ask which Kyle, but now I immediately know which Kyle. Uh, Kyle Scherling. Yeah. Um, and uh, he said, MTB60 question mark. And the B stands for plug on. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's very highly contested if it stands for boom or whatever it may uh -huh, be. Uh -huh. uh, but yes, the M MTB60, our plug on is, is something we are, are very much working on and, and very much it's it's. It's a component game right now, just trying to get the components we need to, to produce things at scale and at quality. Mm. And so the MTB60 is in, in queue and coming soon. Got it. I don't have a definitive date, but it is something we are, are very aware of and working on. Okay, follow-up question, MPR52 uh, or MCR54 dual? <laughs> MPR52, uh -huh. um, I have to be very careful on how I'm, what I say this. Yes, coming soon, going into production. Uh, it should be, we should see that in the next few few weeks. Okay. We're, we're hoping in the next few months. Um, we're just confirming the qu quantities mm -hmm. and uh, how long that remains as a current product for us. Got it. Oh, um, interesting. That, that's that's the, the part we want to, because the, the MPR 52 is a very, very nice receiver. We love the 52, but it was designed as, as you may remember, 
my first NAB uh, with WYSIWYGON was in 2018. Uh-huh. And we announced it at, that. I think it was that show or the next year. So that, that product's been in our, our catalog for a while. Yeah. So it's also due an update. Mm, and so we, we are kind of weighing what we have left, what's available for that, mm-hmm. uh, and, and doing that. Got it. Very interesting. Okay. Um, Kyle also asks, would it be possible uh, to have a, a different MTP61 belt clip? So I assume... Um, that he means the spring clip instead of the the wire clip. Is that something? Is that something that's coming? <laughs> I get a hard hit in an interview today, I know. man. Killing didn't it. didn't tell me you're going to come up at the late night and kidding. Yes, we are we are working on a spring clip. Uh, the 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 hold on that is just finding a um, one that fits the right way and is not too bulky. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 samples that I had seen most recently were just a little still too bulky, mm-hmm. and to get it to mount. Because on the MTP60, if you recall or know, uh, there's a few screw points that it goes right on the back. Mm -hmm. And so we are trying to find a way to not put screws in this because then we lose our uh, watertight rating. Got it. Okay. It's wait, is this IP57 or what is, what is the, it's, it's a, if we don't, we don't have an official IP rating on it, but it's, it's a closest to IP65. Got it. Don't submerge it. Okay. Ideally. Got it. But Um, sweat dust. Yeah. It it is sweat. It's sweat. So be sweat resistant, I should say. Got but. it. Um, cool. Kyle says dope. I assume Perfect. that's what we're talking about, the MTB. <laughs> uh, so Miriam says, hello there. Notice some videos that the USB for the MTP61 comes off easily. Any foreseeable solution to that other than the docking system? Uh, well, I mean, the, the, it's, on the MTP61, it's, it's a, just a magnetic connector. Mm-hmm. So it's... it's it's not a massively massive, a strong magnet, so it is have some limitations in how strongly it can hold. Mm-hmm. But uh, usually, once the cable's not uh, trained when it was packed, you should be able to lay it out and it should sit solidly. Yeah. But otherwise, the MTP or the LBC60, the dock is a very nice solution for that. Yes, and I mean in terms of charging a lot of yeah. batteries too, like that's it's kind of a necessity. Um, got it. So really, it's just you know when you're transferring files. Be careful. Yeah. For that, we'd, we'd usually suggest the dock or just to set it in a way that it can be left still. Got it. Okay. Because um, um, one of the cool things we do with these that I don't, I don't know if we ever really have talked about just as far as recording, because I know in the U.S. market, the recording is not quite as popular as, say, in some of the European markets or Canadian mm-hmm. because of some limitations in transmit or record. But one of the coolest things this does, and this has really done this for, for maybe the last couple of firmwares, is... Uh, it'll automatically uh, kind of internally close the file every 10 seconds or so. So if for any reason you pull the battery, the, the file will, it won't corrupt. Hmm. And it auto basically closes the file. A very fun little oh. back end thing that yeah. uh, people may find fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, look, I remember in the beginning of nonlinear recording, that was like a tragedy if you lost power. It would corrupt everything. Yeah. And you would have to cry for a week and pray that some, you know, some guy in a basement with a computer could fix it. And sometimes the prayers worked and sometimes they didn't. <laughs> that's how Peter yeah. got his start. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what Peter said. Uh, so you didn't answer the question about the MCR 54 Dual. Um, Kyle, you're you killing say, me? No, this isn't Kyle. This oh, I was going to say, Kyle, uh, I, I was trying to evade that one, but it's okay. It was me before, by the way, oh. about, the, about the MPR um, um. <laughs> yeah, Kyle was asking about the boom, but now Ray wants to know about the MCR 54 Dual. The 54 Dual is something we are we are working on. I, I don't have as definitive a date on that one, um, but we are we are working on getting that one back as well. I just I don't have a date on it. Got it. Okay. Uh, Rayno Rayner uh, wants to know if there are any plans for WYSICOM Digital. The you know, we, we look at a lot of technologies and systems out there. As, as far as the 60 and 61 go in this, this, what we call kind of symphony platform, everything inside of it is, it's digitally processed with an analog modulation or transmission. Mm-hmm. So the, the value in that being, and this is not to knock digital systems, just our approach versus some of the other approaches is, the analog gives you a lot more versatility in difficult or complex RF environments that in narrowband, you really only have to sit about 3 dB above the noise floor Whereas with some digital systems, you have to sit closer to 12. Mm. And as you know, everything in RF is just a game of signal to noise. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, and, then, well, and then there's also the other benefit of analog where you get that kind of graceful bow out. So if you get to the edge of range, you might hear a little bit of hiss, but you still have it. Where 
Sometimes yeah. it's digital, it just goes. Um, okay, so Miriam responded to your uh, recording comment about the file saving, um, saying, uh, let's see, it's a very nice feature. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Kyle says, uh, he says, I know it's a hardware show, but uh, any plans for quicker app pairing for finding or tuning equipment? Yeah, it's so what, what Kyle is asking when you when you pair in the app, it's it's a limitation related to the WDF chart. So the, the WYSIWYGON can do in every device it has a WDF. So it's a 40 by 60, think Excel sheet of frequencies, uh, like a frequency customization. So this is very useful for when you're traveling. Maybe, you know, I have 20 frequencies I know are good in downtown Manhattan and 20 I know are good in downtown Dallas. So you can pre-build a bunch of coordinations. Uh -huh. The, the, the thought process behind this. What happens when you load the app, it, it's reading that entire chart. Mm. So our, our app guy, uh, I won't blow him up here because he, I think he already turns on the two-factor on my email every day just to mess with me. Uh -huh. But <laughs> Sorry. It's, uh, it's, we're, we're working on a way to get the app to uh, effectively read only what's changed. And so we, we are very aware of that to get it to read faster. So I was the backstory to the answer the question. Got it. Okay. Um, so it's it being worked on. It's being worked on. Perfect. Um, and then what is it? Um, Miriam also wants to know, is there a plan to be able to accept a digital slash AES input like the new Sheps microphone? No, uh, I, I don't know that we had the conversation. Mean, there might be, but I have not actually had the conversation okay. of... of most of the focus on this has really just been with uh, microphones yeah. and even line levels. There's not, a, not been a lot of requests yeah. that I'm aware of to take digital, digital input. It might be, you know, because so the Backstory Sheps has a new uh, digital preamp, CMD42, okay. and uh, outputs AES42. So it might be something that would be good to include in that MTB60 or develop a, a you know, PHA60D for the... Um, for the MTP60. Just throwing it out there. I yeah, imagine no, that's we'll, what... We'll definitely, uh, uh, as soon as we finish, I'll, I'll discuss with the team and, and see if we put it into the what's possible. Okay. Uh, let's go back to Facebook here. We're good on Facebook. Jeff, anything else that you want to say? Things that you're excited about for the future? Uh, you know, you can talk more about your favorite color if you want. Anything at all? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm always excited of the future of WYSICOM. We, we're... What's my phrase? We're constantly developing new and exciting things. Mm -hmm. um, there's things that I, I, I have been told very strictly uh, because I announced something last year that I probably wasn't supposed to talk about yet with the right. time code with the tentacle. Yeah, yeah. Um, I told strictly there's certain things I shouldn't say yet. Okay. Um, what are those yeah, and what are those things? <laughs> I'll say Massimo's not here. I, I don't want to get fired today. I like uh -huh. my job. Uh, there, there's some things we're really excited about. I mean, the M MTB60 is not, a, this don't, this is not an announcement. Sorry, it's not an announcement. But we are... We're working on a, a lot of cool things that are just going to absolutely revolutionize the way that, you know, production sound works, that, that RF works in general. Mm. Um, there, there's some really cool things down the, down the road. Cool. You know? okay. Also excited to come, come see you in a, a few weeks. I was going to ask if you're going to be at the expo or not. I am. Okay. I, already, I already booked my, booked my flights and everything. Fantastic. Um, so uh, that, that to be said... Uh, coming up in a few weeks is the Gotham Expo in New York. If you're in New York, if you want to come to New York, come visit. We're going to have kind of a mini NAB show. Jeff will be there. WYSIWYGON will be there, among others. Um, all right, Jeff, I think that wraps it up for day, uh, day one for us. Day one. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll do the full wrap-up since it's the end of day one. Uh, you can watch this video and more at GothamSound.tv. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and X. And I know they're the same, but Are you it's guys fine. on TikTok? I, yeah, sometimes. We sometimes <laughs> do the TikToks. Um, and uh, anyway, we, uh, we appreciate you watching. If you have any ideas uh, for content, want to get in touch with us, email us at info at GothamSound.com. Call us. Uh, we buy and rent and service stuff, too. So, like, we don't just make these happy, fun videos. Uh, we do actually provide uh, direct advice to our customers. Uh, and we love you. So I said it first. You don't have to say it back. Take care, everybody.